Hi there, it's Top Tip Tuesday time again and on today's video we're going to be linking some dynamic particles together using springs. This is with NX constraints. But then we'll be mapping the effects of those springs using data mapping for this pretty dynamic simulation. So let's get that clock started and we'll jump in. In our scene, we have this plane is going to be our floor and we have this ram skull model. Just to get an idea of the scale, the plane is pretty big, 8,000 by 8,000 centimetres. Uh, the ram has got a vibration tag on with some rotation settings to give it this nice rotating look. And we're going to use these as our collision objects. So let's select both of them. Go to tags, extensions, insidium, collider. And on the plane collider, the floor, we don't want any bounce. We want a bit of friction and we want a little bit of scatter. So the particles that bounce on the floor will kind of scatter off in different directions. The ram skull, we're going to take off the bounce and just have a bit of uh, friction only. Something like that. That'll do. Now we need an emitter. Let's go to Insidium, X particles, emitter. Here's our default emitter, and because we're in quite a big scene scale, the emitter looks quite small. Let's go to the object tab. We're going to go to the emitter plane and change it to minus Y, so it's pointing down. The width will make 200, and the height will make 1500, so it's long and thin, something like that. Then in the emission tab, we're going to have it set to rate. The lifespan will make it, say, 220 with 30 variation birth rate of 15,000 and that's 15,000 per second in this scene and we'll take all the speed off. So now we've got our particles emitting. Now we need some forces in our scene. We want to pull these down. So actually, let's just move that emitter up a little bit and we've got our Nexus tools docked here. Look, we can bring in an NX gravity and this we will just change the strength down to maybe 500 centimeters and now those particles will be pulled down by the gravity and they'll collide with our collision geometry all right now we want some black and white values in these particles because that's what we're going to use to drive our particle to particle interaction so let's go to our emitter display tab and in the color mode we'll change it from single color to use shader and in the use shader, we're going to add a noise. And in the noise, let's click on it. Now you can choose any noise you want here. I'm just going to use the default noise, but I'm going to put the global scale up to 600. And we're going to give it a little bit of a low and high clip there, which if we look at the preview, it's really kind of clamped this contrast here. So now if we hit play, you'll see that we're getting different colored black and white particles. Now these are always being emitted white so we can actually change that by animating that noise in the noise settings let's put an animation speed of say 0.5 and now we're going to get um, animating noise as they're emitted so the black and white values are changing I think we've got a little bit too much white in this so let's just move this up a bit just to darken that off a bit maybe something like that Okay, cool. So now these particles are interacting with our geometry, but not with each other. And that's what we want. So we're going to bring in an NX constraint to do that. Now, the NX constraints has loads of different types of constraints that we can use. We're going to use connection birth constraints, which connect particles together with springs. So in this, let's put the iterations up to three for higher accuracy. And we're going to say that any particle can connect with, let's put this up to 12. So any one particle can connect with up to tw uh, 12 other particles, each with their own spring, if they're within a radius of, say, 60 centimetres of each other. And the break type, I'm just going to put it on none, so those springs can't snap. So now when we hit play, we've got our particles, and you'll see that, yes, look, you can see, look, they're all connected with these springs now. And we've got this pretty cool springy simulation going on. These particles aren't able to free themselves of each other because they're connected by these unbreakable springs. What we are going to do, though, is we're going to say the black ones, those connections should snap immediately. And the white ones, that connection should never snap. And it's going to give us a really interesting simulation effect. So the way we're going to do that, let's go to the constraints. What we need to do is activate breaking first. Let's put it on absolute. And we're going to say if the string, uh, the spring stretches above 300 centimeters, then snap. Now, um, we're going to see that that is quite a long distance for it to have to stretch. 
and it's not going to snap. So it looks exactly as it did before. But now we're able to use data mapping to map this value to our black and white values. So let's go to the mapping tab. We're going to add a color brightness map. We're going to set the category as birth constraints. That's what we want. But the parameter is not weight, it's break. And we've got the range min set at zero, which is black. That's this knot here. And we've got the range max set at one, that's white. And that's this knot here. And what this is saying is at black, it has zero centimeters of that break value. So they'll just snap straight away. And then when the particles get to white, they'll have 100% of that break value, which is 300 centimeters. So they're never going to snap. They're never going to stretch, stretch that far. So if we hit play now, we should have independently falling black particles, yes, and the white particles are staying connected with those springy springs, and they're interacting and making these really cool kind of ribboning effects as they collide with our geometry. That's looking really cool. And if you want to make adjustments to this, you can get more of the springy white particles if you go to the emitter, display tab, and you can just make some adjustments to the noise to add more white particles to the scene. So you get more of the connected springy particles and fewer of the black ones. Or we can obviously have that going the other way. You can increase and add some greys, which will have a, a, a lower snap value than the white ones. And we can get different effects by making adjustments just to the particle color. And that's how we can use constraints to get particles to interact with each other. And then how we can use data mapping to apply those constraints differently to particles according to their color value.